Welcome to another conversation right here on Unlock Your Soul with yours truly, Antonio Soul. And as usual, I'm at the very beautiful, very amazing, with the best food. You should come check it out. Nairobi Street Kitchen. If you're ever in Nairobi, this is definitely the mecca for continental food, from whatever you'd like, from Indian food to Mexican food to cocktails, drinks, whatever you like, make sure you come check it out here. And right now I'm at the fire end door. I'm enjoying, yeah, I'm gonna be enjoying some pizza in a short while. But speaking of choices and continental, the whole world agrees that if there's a breed of human beings that is the most difficult to understand, but also the most exciting, because I feel we've always said that we will change the world, millennials, we were unable to do it. We are we are caught up in so much debt, so now we can't change the world. These guys, they don't give a hoot about your feelings and anything around them. They are here to literally change the world. Maybe they are the new aliens, but let me not speak on their behalf. I have one young man who I have known since I used to work for a media house, and he was an intern then, and you know, God blessed him and he got a job um, as an IT specialist at another company, and he's just scaling up the ranks because that's what Gen Z are all about. They're all about breaking everybody out. Nothing can stop them. Please help me in welcoming a young man who I'm gonna to introduce today, but who also, just as a disclaimer, he's not here to speak on behalf of Gen Z. He's here to speak on his own experience and how life has been for him. Please make some noise for the one and only Solo. <laughs> Solo, how are you? I'm fine, very fine. Solo, do you, do you prefer to speak English, French or Italian? English. <laughs> <laughs> I as could if, speak French as well. Oh, you may speak French? Yeah, yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Comment ça va? Ça va bien. So, uh, wow, I'm actually, I'm shocked. Kuna watu hapa akina cage. Na sama. I would read three words of French. Bonjour. <laughs> you're about to say Je m'appelle. I saw you. Ça va bien. Those... <clears throat> Merci, Annie. Where are you taking me from? <laughs> so anyway, guys, we are all about fun uh, here. Gen Zs, that's the way we are behaving. They're very unscripted the way they are. Mm. Solo, today I want to know about experience Yako. Kama mm. Gen Z and Asian Kenya. First, you acknowledge you're a Gen Z, right? Yes. Anyone born between 1995 and 2000 and something. I think yeah. five or something. Yeah. The other ones I don't know are Gen, Z, Gen what. Mm -hmm. So you are Gen Z in Kenya. Do you find a... It difficult first for people to understand you as a Gen Z, maybe just the way you carry yourself, or, or, or how are you as a Gen Z? Let's start from there. Where we come at Gen Z, how do mm -hmm. you guys behave in Kenya? How are you like? Well, we're, we're vibrant, well, more vibrant than your generation. What? I mean, that's... first and foremost, be very careful when you speak to me. Don't say things like your generation. <laughs> like I'm an uh, old man. Okay, the mini millennials. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You did just say Amen. that. Oh my God. <laughs> you just said that. Your generation. Uh, As if okay. I'm not an old uh. guy who was born in the 60s. <laughs> Be very careful. I mean, just chase uh. your way. Anyway, you, we are saying we're very different. How yeah. do you think you and uh, millennials, how are we different? How, how do well, you feel? Well, uh, it's mostly, okay, we're mostly tech savvy because we were born in the digital world. Okay. So that makes, uh, it, it takes a toll on uh, our opinions. They're totally different from yours. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've grown up with social media. Yeah. So everything, I mean, uh, our way of doing things is more, is more of, uh, I mean. Tech driven. Yeah, tech driven. Your answers on the phone. Everything is on the phone. If you want to, if you're going for an event, the first thing you do is how it's gonna real gonna look like. Exactly. Who am I gonna shoot? What am I gonna wear for this occasion? Exactly. D then that way, do you find, let's say, when you go, let's say to, when you're hanging out with people, mm -hmm. or when you're just even in a social circle with your family, mm -hmm. they don't understand you because maybe you might just be, wanna be on the phone the whole time and you're actually talking to your friends, yeah. but to them, it's, it's, you're not being social. You're exactly. being rude or. Or you're just being weird. You're being social on the phone, but according to them, you're not being social. You're being antisocial. Exactly. Do, do your parents understand you as solo? <clears throat> not remember, not mm -hmm. Gen Z. Everyone, mm -hmm. do your parents understand you as solo? Do they do they get you, or do they have a lot of work to ex understand? Why are you silent? Why did you decide you can just go mute on people? <laughs> 
you can decide my mental health. I'm taking it fast, and I'm not gonna talk to people in this house. Yeah. Do they understand? Well, how they you do. Are? Okay. Uh, for me, it comes down to like you say. I'm in the technical field. Yeah. So like they know. Uh, I'm not usually so social when it comes to well i'm social out yeah. there but in the house i'll always be on my phone yeah or on my laptop yeah so they they kind of don't get how i am they know i have very many friends i'm yeah. so social but you don't but they when, don't see his friends they do okay okay well, they do but then uh i'm still well i'm in the house it's yeah. totally different yeah because i'm on my phone yeah. while i'm being social yeah. to the friends and everyone around but while in the house i'm totally silent doing my things with my phone laptop yeah so and, and and the thing that also sort of asks us and asks them mm -hmm. is the way you are, you are nonchalant about it. you don't care like you see if if i as a millennial yeah. if if my parents saw me as being like antisocial mm -hmm. i'd feel like i need to explain to them oh by the way guys it's not like that i'm just you know there's something i'm working on i feel i need my space yeah you guys don't you you guys just don't explain yourself you, you, if you want to hate me, that's on you. <laughs> yeah. That's just how Gen Zs are. Yeah. You decide. Exactly. Like, but also, are you telling them that that one times have changed, mm -hmm. and and we're not different, and people just need to get on with the program. Well, you'll tell them that, but they kind of it won't make sense to them. You yeah. Know? Like, how are you not? Yeah. How are you not? How are you socially it? antisocial? How is that possible? It doesn't make sense to them. But at work, also, you guys have have got a lot of flack, mkuakazi, mm -hmm. because I have seen. Gen Z's, including the ones that I've worked with, mm -hmm. my goodness, and I'm not putting a blanket uh, 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 explanation on all of them. Uh -huh. These guys will quit work at three, like two p.m. Yeah, you think someone went for lunch and they yeah. say I'm not coming back, mm -hmm. and you're like, "What do you mean not coming back? You have you're supposed to send me this research you are doing." Da, 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 yeah. And say, "No, I've quit work." Yeah, and they go. <laughs> Explain to me how <laughs> is that is normal. Well, uh... <laughs> is this okay? It's you okay. are the only Gen Z I know, uh -huh. the only one who uh -huh. I know, uh -huh. who has written a letter mm -hmm. explaining why you'd like to leave this job and certain <laughs> opportunities and maybe you're going back to school uh, and you feel yeah. the rest of your other friends. And maybe only because you've been influenced by people like me. Yeah, true. But some of your friends, they'll just uh -huh. say, Miss, you do the job. And now I'm talking evil. Now I'm not talking to you. Where do you guys, where do you guys <laughs> get that audacity from? Whose children are you? Uh, well, it works for us. Because when I draw... <laughs> Did you just say it works for us? Yeah. Wow. That's how we are. Like, it works, it works. It works. You see, she died. She died. Bore me, bore me, work. Go and go, it goes away. And also, you guys are uh -huh. very... You know, like, the way for us, we are very... Uh, you know, people would... Uh, people would take advantage of us, let's say, at work. Mm -hmm. For you guys, you don't allow that nonsense. Like, you're being overworked. You're being given extra work more than your is in your contract. Mm -hmm. You guys call out your bosses. They you will tell them, excuse me, do not call me. We've had <laughs> instances on social media. And we're gonna play some of the tweets yeah. right here so people can see mm. on social media where someone is like, it is after hours, do not call me or text me. Yeah. And we as millennials, as people, our parents before us, mm -hmm. your boss calls you at 7 p.m. You just pick. Because if you don't pick you don't have a job in the morning. Yeah, that's true. Again, where mm -hmm. do you get this audacity? Is it from the understanding that you've seen us complain so much <laughs> that now you're like, we're no longer going to be stuck uh, up in your... Muli complain, so I'm going to see to square this yeah. nonsense. Okay, you know, for us, yeah. well, things have to work out as we feel like it should. So if it doesn't make sense or if it makes sense to us, that's what we'll go with. Hey? Yeah. You, you do realize <laughs> now that we cannot... that very many of us are afraid of hiring mm -hmm. like me exactly. i have gen z's who, who who we work together yeah like this one holding the phone here is called jeff akaranga the only reason why jeff works with me <laughs> yeah. is because jeff is saved <laughs> 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 like jeff is saved like he just uh, came from a conference uh -huh. right now as we speak he's editing a conference for a church. like he's saved saved uh -huh. saved <laughs> Because I know he can't, he knows the uh, Lord yeah. will disapprove of his behavior <laughs> if he walks out on this production. Uh -huh. The other one is a Gen Z in denial, like I'm not to <laughs> talk about his story. But the other one is a Gen Z also, his communication skills are so bad. Uh -huh. If he decides, Mimi on Tuesday, on Tuesday, Tuesday, who you are? 
You know that Gen Z? You're that Gen Z. In denial. <laughs> He's a, I say Gen Z in denial. He doesn't know that Gen Z. He decides me. I'll call you. I'll text you on Tuesday. Mm. And you tell him, but on Tuesday is the day when the world is ending. No, <laughs> we'll talk on Tuesday. But the world is ending on Tuesday yeah. before it ends uh-huh. 9, p- 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. So, but it's also enviable. Mm-hmm. I feel it's enviable the way you guys are. Yeah. In the sense that I have seen some of you who I've worked with mm-hmm. who don't take, you don't take BS. We don't. You just don't. If, if a boss becomes rude to you, if somebody decides they're going to make your life difficult, you will you leave. Yeah. And, and some of the instances where I saw online mm-hmm. was a boss sort of like reprimanding a Gen Z employee. Mm-hmm. The Gen Z employee told the boss, mm-hmm. by the way, mm-hmm. Nataka Ujoevi, for my mental health, you will not call me after 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. And for my mental health, I am no longer going to reply to emails da, 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 that are not of making sense to me. <laughs> if they don't make sense to me, I'm not replying to those emails. Uh, yeah. Again, I ask you, Gen Z poster child, uh-huh. where does this audacity come from? <laughs> and has it made your life a bit easier maybe at the workplace? It definitely makes your work easier and your life easier. Because, because let, me, let me give you an example. Yeah. Uh, where I was working yeah. before I left, yeah. before I wrote that uh, resignation letter. Yeah. Well, my boss wasn't for, he wasn't one to hire Generation Zs because yeah. he felt like uh, these people can live at whatever time <laughs> they feel like. Yeah. So, yeah. And when I come on as a employee, two months down the line, you, yeah. you just leave without even giving a response. Mm. Well, but for us, um, I mean, we, we, we don't want life to be for, hard for us. But also, again, we, you guys are questioning this. You're, you're, you're questioning the status quo because uh-huh, uh-huh. the issue here, if you listen to your boss's story, mm-hmm. the issue here is not, is not, is not hiring a Gen Z mm-hmm. and two months on the line they leave. Yeah. The issue here is mm-hmm. how do you treat the humans who come to work for you to a point where they decide to leave? So your exactly. boss is so used to mistreating people yeah, yeah, and yeah. having them so sub- subservient, like whatever. Yeah. I, I will be, I'm okay. Yeah, true. He's never had people walk up to me and be like, excuse me, mm. you're in Madarao. Mm. Or excuse me, you can't send me to a uh, Karyobangi for work yeah. and I don't have fare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an out of office thing. Mm. Give me my money or I, or, or the guy decides, okay, you want me to go to Karyobangi? Mm-hmm. Through the casual job. <laughs> so they're not used to being questioned. Per yeah, se. yeah, true. But then how are you guys then how do you think about money? How will you survive with this sort of, this sort of, you know, sort of character or personality? How do you think you're going to survive? Well, um, I think mainly people will think about their mental health over anything well, else. Well, okay. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It works uh-huh. for us. Because uh-huh. it doesn't make sense if you're working at a place yeah. just for the money. Yeah. But then you're undergoing too much stress and it's it's just it, it, it doesn't feel right and you know that I, had, I had some questions for you because now that uh-huh. you mentioned about mental health yeah so i just want to ask you mm-hmm. okay your mental health mm-hmm. versus career which one comes first it depends but mainly yeah the career comes first but but mental health will take over anytime any day because uh this 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 we all need money yeah so the career comes in there. But then if you're in a work setting or environment that is so stressing, yeah. you'll find yourself leaving. Mm. So I would say mental health over career. Your mental health comes first. Yeah. With this sort of, uh, sort of outlook on life, uh, mm-hmm. how do you guys, do you have, what, what kind of relationships are Gen Z in? Do you guys, like for you, ex- example, for mm-hmm. you, do you plan to be in a long-term relationship? Is that something that you look forward to? Is that something that you take seriously? Not really. <laughs> so what kind of relationships are you into? Like, for you? Well, uh, for me personally, when it comes to, okay, long-term relationships mean marriage. Marriage, well, yeah. Well, that's the end of the line yeah. for it. But then, uh, I don't think I'm one for marriage. I don't think I'll marry. You don't think you'll marry? I don't think. But do you, will you have like, um, like, you know, Will you be in a relationship with a girl, you know, a partner or someone who you, you, you're living with, you're sharing your fears and your struggles and your Gen Z problems Whoa, from work? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. So no. For, you, for you guys, which is something I've also seen online, yeah. is, I mean, relationships are good, mm-hmm. but not if there yeah. are a lot of work. Well, I can, I can do a relationship, 
but if it's one that's leading to marriage i no i don't think what about kids do you plan on having kids well i want one you want one or two or two but i don't but know how that's like trying to marry that person who you have kids with yeah like this is we can co-parent we can be good parents i can do that you see do you see how you scare us it's not scary we, let me let me know, we are so used to such even for someone like me who's not married mm-hmm. who's not i don't know if i'm planning in the near future uh-huh. but like but i know i want kids i hey, me because i mean now like right now yeah i'm craving for children you want children out like five seven but, of but them but you don't want to marry people here ninirin. <laughs> so me i'm probably the millennial z <laughs> but you don't want to marry no i wouldn't mind for me i wouldn't mind i know for you guys it's like ah, no, no 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 it's not gonna be done it's uh-huh. like no, no no don't don't pressure me yeah you know for you guys it's a very clear don't pressure him yeah in his own time mm. how do you then reconcile all of these things together when your parents are there looking at you thinking oh give me grandchildren oh you know marriage oh you know christianity oh you know religion you must be someone <laughs> how do you reconcile all these things when you guys are breaking every norm and that's what i'm telling you <laughs> For someone like me who's a rebel, uh-huh. it still shocks me that the people who've come after me mm. who can be like, no, it's they not gonna happen. Us. Do you know how many wedding companies you guys are gonna put out of business? Because if you've got none of yeah. you guys will be getting married. Wedding Nobody companies wants. will close, events companies are gonna close, yeah. weddings are not happening, catering companies, yeah. fashion companies. What do you guys want? What do you want? Let, let, let me speak in general terms. Yeah. Well, most of the Gen Zs will just date without knowing like why they're dating they just date without even thinking about the future or anything and not, and not in a negative way it's more yeah. like living in the moment yeah living in Norati, the moment Norati with many expectations exactly and then now what that comes with is that uh if you if you're only focusing about right now and you're not thinking about what happens after this you guys are just dating living in the moment that's how these relationships come to mm, an end like mm. so quickly because you what exactly are you dating for because people are just dating without even having any reason behind it they'll say uh, i love this person let me just date this person but love is not entirely about um what will i say love isn't the core yeah the transactional relationships like yes. because if i if i love you then now you give me X, yeah so you and then give me a relationship give me it's, a it's, child it's actually transactional because yeah. some people will date for money yeah. some will date for the lifestyle some will date for love but when uh, gen z say say it yeah. it becomes a problem it becomes exactly look at these children why would you you know yeah 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 mm, when was your last relationship <laughs> or are you in a relationship my what? or are you in a situation i think that's the word my last relationship was it ended in 2021 Okay and now then you, now yeah. uh wow, wow 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 tough you're in one but like you said you're exactly. not gen z you're not the type to be like yeah you're not out here to like say oh i'm with <laughs> nani keep off yeah 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 hey let me tell you me i feel like there'll be a new plague <laughs> <laughs> to finish off gen z uh, <laughs> so the world can go back to normal because it you should. guys it should. hey you guys Eh. <laughs> but also i believe that you guys have the power to uh-huh. literally change the world mm-hmm. with your outlook on life mm-hmm. you guys will be like you know what mm-hmm. Ugh, man whatever happens happens yeah we mm-hmm. will not be al- we will not allow ourselves to be misused in the office we will not be mistreated we will not be uh, taken for granted yeah and most importantly we will live life in our own terms on our own terms yeah but i think it's very enviable we can yeah. sit here and act like oh you guys are different but we must ask ourselves mm-hmm what strength are you guys getting for yourselves by being so different and i think yeah. number one strength like you said that mm-hmm. mental health and mm-hmm. mental wealth yeah i think it's very very important because your your health is your wealth so i yeah. mean it's very important but now let's go to you know you're a gen z out mm-hmm. of school mm-hmm. you've left uni you've graduated yeah and you're now seeking work mm-hmm. how was your experience looking for work and and were you sort of disappointed do you feel disgruntled you know either way how one people treat interns yeah uh just the lack of respect or the lack of professionalism in whatever field mm-hmm. uh, did you feel some type of way yeah uh well you see employment uh let's say it starts like during internship yeah 
uh, you remember the time I was at Nation Media? Yeah. Well, we were interning and we were doing like too much work, but no pay, not even a single shilling. Yeah. Transport is on you, yeah. lunch is on you, everything but is I on you. But I've never understood that these interns working for free, I don't get it. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're kind of using us. By the way, and just remember, employers uh -huh. Uh -huh. thought uh -huh. that the law is not changed uh -huh. to have it mandatory for interns to be paid. Uh -huh. Yet it is actually labor, so you're forcing exactly. people to work for free. Yeah. In an environment where you're teaching guys that they should stand up for their rights, mm -hmm. that you know labor should be should be you know commensurate your your pay should be commensurate with your labor, mm -hmm. but we're here teaching people. Yeah. No. It Telling them no, don't pay gents, don't pay these kids. Yeah. The internship should be for free. Yeah. There's places where they have intern interns for two years. Mm. So again, we go back to uh, surprised, shocked, disappointed. Yeah. So uh, well, I started working like this year in January. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the place that I went to, mm -hmm. uh, okay, before even that, I mean, mm -hmm. looking for work is mm -hmm. quite a, it's a job itself. Because mm -hmm. I sent over, I would say, like 200 applications, but almost all of them. You sent over how them, many applications? 200. Bro. <laughs> you emails, know you, you're, you're using emails. their Wi-Fi like this. <laughs> like I really did it, even while I was in school, before I even completed. Yeah. I started sending applications, but then... You, the feedback you get is we're sorry to inform you that you haven't gotten this or even when you get to a place mm. uh there there are terms of work i uh, they, they 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 don't even they, they they can't work out for you yeah because you'll probably get some place that is too far or their timing uh is totally different and mm. they're not even paying you well yeah so i got one in january but they're also giving just an allowance for transport and lunch mm -hmm. and how much are we talking about allowance 15 15k 15k well 15k was plus tips and yeah. everything else that you get but the, the, what he was giving was 10,000 wow so you see starting with 10,000 that only caters for your transport and lunch yeah so you go to work from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening monday to saturday the only free time you have is sunday so Sunday is when you have to do the rest of everything else. So you can go back to work for this guy again on Monday. You know, you can the only day you can sleep. Yeah. Sunday. Used, it used to shock me that you were working on a Saturday. I yeah. remember the first time telling you, don't agree. <laughs> because I was like, what? Like on a Saturday. Uh, yeah, on a Saturday. Me, celeb, me, I can tell people, hey, I don't work on Saturdays. I yeah. <laughs> only work on Monday to Friday. Yeah. So it was very again, uh -huh, let's continue this story. So it was it this was gay offers you ten thousand bob. Yeah. And since I know your personal story, and I, not everything has to be said on podcasts, you know? Yeah. You don't want to put all your business out there. Mm -hmm. But I do know for a fact that you had to live, let's say, a more comfortable life, mm -hmm. uh, probably closer to what you are doing, yeah. to move now mm -hmm. to a lesser comfortable sort of, you know, life, lesser yeah. privacy, yeah. because you have to survive at this job. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things you probably need to learn about either the people who came before you or your mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. Do you learn now something about your parents and how mm -hmm. they will sacrifice mm -hmm. their happiness yeah. just provide for you? Yeah, that's because true. your parents will take a very bad salary, mm -hmm. something so minimal, yeah, yeah. just so they can at least earn something, so they can at least have something for you. Yeah, yeah. Why you now, as as this guy is paying 10k and with this crazy workload? Mm -hmm. We continue the story, and then mm -hmm. you tell me later if you actually realize that your parents, why wow, your parents have suffered for you. Yeah, that's uh -huh. true. So 10K, crazy <laughs> workload, working like two buses away. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they, I, know, I know they go through a lot for yeah. us. But then I think when you get into it is when you come to realize that our parents like really sacrifice a mm, lot for us. Mm. We don't we don't get to see it at the moment yeah. while we are at school studying. But then when you're out there is when you come to see uh, life is really tough. Yeah. You have to go an extra mile or sacrifice. Like as for me, my social life kind of completely went down. Because yeah. I'm busy for 10 hours every single day, six days a week. The only time I have, I don't even have time for myself. You're working for 10 hours. Yeah. Hey? It's actually, is it nine or ten? From eight to six. You, I told you you're a different, different kind of Gen Z. Yeah, I but, see. But in your, in your generation, uh -huh. it wasn't like a big deal in the sense that since you can't even meet your friends, mm -hmm. you guys will meet on DMs or Instagram. Exactly. It will be okay. Now it comes down to that. Do, do you kind of now value, does, does that make you look at life <laughs> as this is how life should be or this is valuable? Or do you think no? 
things could be different things could be better things could be more comfortable you don't have to be you don't have to relish in discomfort for you to be like i'm making it mm. yeah they, they, they should be better but okay for now while you're starting it's, it's definitely different i mean mm. for now you'll just go with whatever you get because yeah. many people are struggling people don't even have jobs yeah. like a lot a lot of people yeah so if you're starting i mean the little that you get yeah. you just appreciate yeah because you see now if uh, we're talking about like you see the question you asked about um mental health of yeah. a career yeah for now i won't act like my mental health will come first because yeah. in as much as i want to leave this boss who is always making noise and not paying well yeah I still need to 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 like get money to do stuff. I yeah. can't always like rely on my parents. Yeah. So you see I'll have to sacrifice my mental health, my time, my social life for me to get uh the little money for me to at least survive because I won't like depend on my parents now yeah. that I'm out of school. So uh I think whenever you're starting something you just have to pick up whatever bullshit. You see, yeah, like sometimes you, you take every bullshit. But yeah. also the thing about our parents, you realize our parents took a lot of BS. Yeah, exactly. And they just sat in it. Yeah. And they made it better and they mm-hmm. did something out of it. But yeah. and, but I also know again, mm-hmm. again I might be coming from a place of privilege because I decided to I decided to walk out of a mm-hmm. job because of it was not working well for me from mm-hmm. a money perspective from my mental health mm-hmm. i remember one time i yeah. come from a meeting mm-hmm. <laughs> i've never said this anywhere yeah. but my 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 our head of i don't know broadcasting or radio i don't know what she was she was head of broadcasting you you know her i know her so she <laughs> <laughs> so i'd come from a meeting with a uh-huh. client uh-huh. on the second floor yeah this is me coming from a meeting where i'm making the company money money yeah the money they paid that for for me to activate on air mm-hmm. is the money i'm being paid i'm making per month eh. well i'm making them 24 30 times that m- amount of money eh, 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 eh. so she didn't realize uh-huh. she what happened was so she walks into the studio yeah just before my show starts mm-hmm. not realizing i'm behind her mm-hmm. coming from a meeting to make her and the company money mm-hmm. yeah so i walk i literally walk because i'm excited i'm like oh my boss is coming to see you know see me at work yeah she makes a comment to our head of radio uh-huh. and says something like ah, and Jafika. hey but let me not ask you know this these people nowadays in their mental health things <laughs> you don't want to talk and then someone says that he, you don't care about their mental health uh, she basically uh, disregarded yeah that that is something that should be cared for in the office mm-hmm. and if it is mm-hmm. let me not deal with it because it can come to bite her in the ass yeah when people say oh she wasn't oh she was not even my mental health she never used to care about it she used to be very mean to us at the office mm-hmm. like for her it was like a thing like it's like a it's like a thing people throw yeah, yeah so they can get out of work yeah that time i was behind her you had everything i had everything uh-huh my excitement <laughs> everything i went and just sat down i sat down uh i remember asking myself yeah so me i'm supposed to look good on radio or sound good on radio mm-hmm. at the expense of my mental health and this is what people actually say about me like when they can't see me yeah <laughs> the way i left nation it <laughs> should be sad to you today uh, yeah. it should be sad <laughs> as i'm telling you me i'm a borderline hey. gen z it should be sad yeah so i'm doing a show <laughs> <laughs> and why you why you still working in a nation no you'd left no i'd left hey yeah. I'm, so i'm 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 doing a show mm-hmm. i'm on air it's 6 50 6 50 mm-hmm. i write an email mm-hmm. to head of broadcasting and head of radio yeah and i'm like by the way it's not working for me anymore and that's how you left today is my last day immediately effective this is immediately 50 6 55 <laughs> i went live on air uh, and nobody nobody knew only i knew what i was about to do no even my even my hey. head of radio was my very good friend yeah nobody knew what I was about to do at 6 55 yeah. i said thank you for being with me the last four years it's been an absolute blast <laughs> It's been so great having you guys and playing uh, the music that you guys love. Yeah. And, you know, growing with you guys. And it's been such a nice journey. Yeah. And today's my last day on radio. Thank you. And whoever will come after me, please be nice to them. Mm-hmm. And I hope they feel in my shoes. Yeah. And that's how I, and that's how I was done. And you left. I left. <laughs> so I, these questions that I'm asking you are not coming from a place of like, you guys are rebels. You're, you should get in line. This is not how the world works. Uh-huh. I just knew mm-hmm. that it is possible to want better. Mm okay so let's you know let's now move to politics mm-hmm. as we get closer to the end and talk about you know how future looks like for you as a gen z okay how old are you now 
I just turned 24 last Friday. Oh, oh my God. Was you, wow, that and looks like you're telling me, Atta, you didn't even tell yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you see, where we are, Atta, would say me anyway are online. How is someone uh, supposed to know these see, things? Uh, see, see, you know I don't usually post you see, much. You see, blessed yeah. happy birthday. Thank you. So, you... <laughs> You just turned 24, which means that the last uh, 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 voting cycle mm -hmm. won't be last for 2022? Yeah, 2022. Yeah, yeah. Did you vote in 2022? Did you vote? Yeah, I voted. My, it was my first time voting, actually. Were you voting because your parents were pushing to vote or you wanted or you wanted the experience? Did it, did it mean anything to you? Uh, well, it was my first time to get a chance to vote after I turned the age. <laughs> <laughs> so you are so voting because, ah, yeah. I'm now past, let me go see. Yeah, exactly. I think it was the first and the only time I'll ever vote. I don't. I good, don't. it's good that you've said it. So why yeah. do you feel like you will never vote again? What, anything that happened? The long lines. That's the first thing that. <laughs> this is the reason why you don't want to vote again. <laughs> no, no, no. Because of still, long lines. There's, 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 there's more. What else? So, uh, okay, we'll vote in people. People who we believe are going to bring change to our communities, to the yeah, country. Yeah. But then uh, we, 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 never see, we never see any change mm. at all. Like whomever person we vote for, yeah. there's, there's no much difference we, we get to but see. But what if, what, if, what if there's like a Gen Z, uh, someone who's a Gen Z wants to vie for MP or MCA or president, would you vote for them? Knowing very well that they spent 8% of their presidency on TikTok. But you, would you still vote for them? Yeah, that's a tough one. Well, <laughs> I, we probably would. Yeah, I Cause, know you guys. Yeah, because for uh, okay, we believe youths are there for youths, and they understand whatever we're going through. Yeah. So most of the people will vote for such a young person. Yeah. Because they feel like uh, this person knows exactly what we go through. Yeah. But then I, I don't know. It's I still feel like it's always going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Nothing ever really changes. So let's now look at, you know, the, how does the future look like for you as a Gen Z? Mm -hmm. Paint a picture for us of how it looks like, let's say five, six, seven, eight years from now. Mm -hmm. Paint for us that picture by telling us, mm -hmm. I'm going to be 32, mm -hmm. I'm going to be 30. I probably have two kids, two baby mamas or co-parenting. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be running my own tech company in my own terms. I'll probably be living, yeah. uh, you know, living in Nanuki where I don't mm -hmm. stress. How does paint for us that picture so we can understand how you know when you guys look into your future we now know uh -huh. we clearly don't understand the past because we don't know what we did to to, to make you guys like this mm -hmm. we your present is confusing us we don't know what to do with you <laughs> children so we are just there trying to write books and study you guys uh, there are yeah. so many things written online on gen z's uh -huh. people trying to understand you nothing makes sense nothing makes sense <laughs> so how does your future look like okay for me yeah well we all dream of a better future yeah. and it's all different for each and every person. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I feel like if, if nothing ever really changes for us, yeah. like let's say if we go back to politics and how the country is run, how the job market is, uh, personally, I would love to like leave the country and go get some greener pastures out there. So which, which country would you like probably want to end up in? Um, Australia, mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. Canada, mm -hmm. the US. Why yeah. do you feel those places will be more conducive for you as a Gen Z? Because um, they have better opportunities, yeah. better salaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the job market there isn't as pressing as this place is. Yeah. Because here you might find a job, but it won't pay you well. Yeah. You might also not find a job and you're still there doing nothing. With, I mean, there's nothing. With a lot of talent and skill exactly, and you're doing nothing with exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of talent and skill around, but it's just laying around because there's no opportunities mm, and jobs. Mm. And even if it's there, it's, it's so overwhelming, you just find yourself living. So I feel like, um, well, for me in the near future, okay, I'm in the tech field, but... My dream, my passion has always to be a pilot. You know that. You, you don't. See, do, no, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying, you see? Yeah. You see how you guys can... You see, now if let's say a millennial, uh -huh. Uh -huh. let's say it's like who? Like Joel there who works as an IT... You specialist. Know, specialist. Yeah. A computer scientist. Yeah. If Even if he didn't want to, mm -hmm. but now that's where he is. Yeah. He'll find a way to just, ah, this will work out. <laughs> 
even if you want a for from uh, Yamawe yeah uko busia yeah. anajanga mawe Nairobi yeah. he will not leave that job he has find a way how that job <laughs> will be the one that allows him to to survive to survive yeah you guys can say today i want to be a pilot guy where do you, you people where do you get <laughs> where do you get this strength from well for us i mean i'm Mama only yako, baba yako, say, oh, oh, yeah. mwana, guy, what, have, what did we do <laughs> Now he wants to be a pilot. We've spent a million shillings <laughs> in school. He said all of uh, that. Yeah. And then you didn't finish halfway. You didn't, uh. you, didn't, you didn't leave halfway. You were like, no, you no, finished. no, I finished. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do something else. Uh, you don't have to do it. As we conclude, yeah. what's your word to society and to Kenyans who feel like they will never understand you? They... They don't get it. You know, for someone who's hiring a Gen Z today, mm-hmm. what is the one, what are some of the tips you can give them to survive? <laughs> to survive, you know, surviving survive. the workplace with a Gen Z. <laughs> you guys now are the like planes of the apes. Uh, you come into the world and you're the ones who tell us how we'll run the world. Yeah. How, how can, what can we do to survive you guys? To an employer now. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have to get our, our perspective because uh-huh. we're different from the millennials and let's say every other generation out yeah. there so i mean uh it's it's different for us they should they should understand that it's different we, you're different we're different uh-huh. so like um i mean we we wouldn't we, we don't like pressure <laughs> <laughs> you don't like pressure we don't like pressure no volcano behavior here yeah i mean we'll work yeah. and we'll we'll deliver whatever yeah. is needed of us but but then, shout to dream eh, my man. emails are threats yeah we we attack you I'm taking you. <laughs> you know what? Anyway, thank you for your time solo. Yeah, thank you. I can't, I can't wait to actually have you again with a lady. So I can just hear the banter of how you guys will be like, Ura that time. So I'm like, okay. you know, <laughs> yeah, these guys, but this is something that happened and just hear you guys concur with each other. Fine. Because I really feel that it's very important for us to get into the brain of a Gen Z young man like you. Mm-hmm. Without, without a lot of, you know, stereotype and misconception and prejudice and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's important for us to really get from you mm-hmm. and also for guys to understand when they hear you speak mm-hmm. is that they shouldn't use what you're saying now to again bash you and bring in more. Oh, you guys want life easy. What do you mean? I shouldn't be made noise at. Come on, make us your You know, it's okay to be reprimanded. Mm-hmm. But also it's the how. Yeah. You can remind me by teaching me, not by making me feel smaller than I am. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have to be, I don't have to be like a, to have my tail mm-hmm. in between my legs for yeah. you to know that you're actually tri- Teach, teaching me yeah. or for you to know that I'm actually a good employee. Yeah. So it's good that we're having this conversation. I'm very glad that you came through. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your time. Yeah. But also, I want to warn you, mm-hmm. even you guys, the way you're making <laughs> our lives difficult, millennials, <laughs> yeah. even your time is coming. <laughs> You'll get the, the, uh, I think the, gen, the yeah. click sound. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones. What's your name? They will put, yeah. <laughs> They'll put fire under your bottom. You will never forget. You'll be like, hey, now I know what people are going through. Uh-huh. Your day is coming. <laughs> See, you're going to end up owning your own IT uh, company. Yeah. Your day is Definitely. coming. <laughs> See, you're going to end up having children. I will. Your day is coming. Those we'll ones uh-huh. will be your medicine. Okay. Thank you for tuning in and for <laughs> listening to our very own Gen Z solo. And he's an amazing, uh, what do you call yourself? Computer scientist? Yeah. He's an amazing computer scientist. If you would like to hire him remotely, if probably your Preferably, you're based in, in Germany, London, Australia, yep. or New Zealand. He's the guy for you. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on all our social media handles at Unlock Your Soul Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere at Unlock Your Soul Podcast. But before we end the show, as usual, starting two weeks ago, this is the third week, I am now, no, it's actually the fourth week. Wow. Yeah, the fourth week. Starting three weeks ago, I have been reading certain quotes for my guests from Rumi. Rumi is a prophet. Just so you guys, you guys can go check out Rumi. And I got this amazing book from some guys called Half Priced Books. They're my very, very good friends who, you know, they always have very interesting kind of books. You should go check them out. and very affordable. So I have, actually, the thing is, I have three for you because you're young and you, you, you need uh. Jesus. So because you're young, the first one is, it's called The Mysteries. Mm-hmm. The unsuspecting child first mm-hmm. wipes the tablet mm-hmm. and then writes the letters on it. Mm-hmm. God turns the heart into blood and desperate tears. Mm-hmm. Then he writes 
the spiritual mysteries on it. Mm -hmm. Go think about it. Really? The second one, the thief will enter. Mm -hmm. No matter what plans you make, mm -hmm. no matter what you acquire, the thief will enter from the unguarded side. Mm -hmm. Be occupied then with what you really value mm -hmm. and let the thief take something else. This explains Gen Z's. <laughs> it's like, bro, stop worrying about... <laughs> There's already a thief coming. Me, I'm worried about my mental health. <laughs> That's a good one. And finally, yeah. how will you know your, your real friends? Mm -hmm. Pain is as dear to them as life. Mm -hmm. A friend is like gold. Trouble is like fire. Mm -hmm. Pure gold delights in the fire. Mm -hmm. Don't forget this one. How will you know your real friends? Pain is as dear to them mm -hmm. as life. A friend is like gold. Mm -hmm. Trouble is like fire. Pure gold mm -hmm. delights in the fire. Mm -hmm. So your pure friends will delight even when things are not working out for you. Yeah. Even when you're broke. Even mm -hmm. your relationship is not working. Yeah. Even when you're not, you know, even your family isn't who they are anymore. Mm -hmm. Even when the whole world is ending, a pure friend mm -hmm. will delight in your fire. Mm -hmm. they'll be right there with you mm -hmm. to go through it all mm -hmm. so my advice to you as a gen z and i think to a lot of gen z's yeah. is i feel like it's okay for you guys to have your your um you know your your value system i believe in people having the value system yeah. as strong and as and as you know formidable as they are mm -hmm. but create work on your network mm -hmm. work on the friends and the people around you make those people your goals so that you cherish them yeah. So they can cherish you, you hold them, so they can hold you. Mm -hmm. So when all else is left and people don't, still don't understand who you are, mm -hmm. you will all have each other. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, you have one another. Yeah. So thank you, Gen Z. <laughs> Solo. Yes. Are you single? Should we give out your number? Yeah, give out my number. Hiya. <laughs> did, did you see how... Be, should we give out your number for real? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, what's give your number? Out. What's your number? You want me to give it out. I uh, just ask you, should we? Yeah. Then do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I thought you don't want to stay single. Uh, no. Or just maybe you're not after mama. Out. Not after mama, by the way. Not after <laughs> mama. Yeah, hey, I want a mama. You're looking for mamas? Yeah. Why? It's money. <laughs> I just need money. You don't realize your parents are going to watch this interview? <laughs> I won't trade to them. Who told you they won't get... I will make sure your parents do <laughs> this. So you know their child is wayward <laughs> and needs Jesus. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Unlock your soul. Peace out. Hey, yo, what's up? This is Anthony, your soul. And thank you so much for watching Unlock Your Soul podcast, where we scratch beneath the surface to find out what really makes us human. Right here on Unlock Your Soul, I am doing the best that I can to tell the African story, to own our story, and most importantly, to import and document our own stories. So please like, share, subscribe to this YouTube page and tell everybody about these beautiful African stories that we are curating. Keep it, unlock your soul.